Good morning everyone and welcome to St Luke's Church Online. My name is Louisa and I'm the children's worker here at St Luke's. I hope that you are all keeping well and I'm so thankful that you could join us today and that through this virtual service we can still be gathered as a people of God even though we are physically apart. If this is your first time tuning in, you are very welcome. We are an international church making disciples of all nations and our core values are worship, witness and welcome. And you can find out more about us on our website and we'd love to get to know you. So leave a comment or a question in the comment section below and we will get back to you. Today is our service of Holy Communion. So if you can, I would encourage you to get some wine or juice and bread ready for later on. So as we come to worship, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we look to you this morning and we ask, would you lift our hearts and minds above the difficulties, above the worries that entangle us? And may we meet with you now in worship. Father, while we have to gather in this very different way, thank you that you are with each one of us wherever we are. Would we experience your comfort, your strength and your encouragement through this time of worship and in deeper understanding of your word? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. You're so awesome, so great. And we worship you, Lord God. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you, and hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Praise is rising, let's sing. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you, and hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you, because when we see you, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day And in your presence all our fears are washed away Washed away Hosanna, Hosanna You are the God who saves us You're worthy of all our praises Hosanna, Hosanna, and come of your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. And hear the sound of hearts returning to you. Yes, God, we turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new, you make us new. Cause when we see you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, you're worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, and come up your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. And 
And in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. You're worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, and come up your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. And you are the God who saves us. You're worthy of all our praises. And come up your way among us. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come of your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Yes, we love you, God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jean-Luc, um, I'm French as you can hear and so please bear with uh, my accent but it's really really good to be with you connected this morning uh, with St. Luke's Earl's Court Church family. So for those who don't know me, I'm married to Ginny and I'm based uh, at St. Barnabas Kensington near Holland Park. It's about just two miles from St. Luke's and uh, I'm one of the pastors there. Also, I've planted two years ago now a French-speaking service, which is part of St. Barnabas. Now, of course, at the moment, we are all home. Because, of course, church buildings are closed, and they may be closed, but the church, the living stones, are well alive. So wherever, wherever you are right now, you can be assured of God's presence with you this morning by his word and by his spirit. So, I used to be at St. Luke's uh, between 2012 and 2015. So I've got a lot of good memories from, from there. Jean and I, of course, send our love to all those we know at St. Luke's. But one memory I have was when uh, I was going during the week for a run uh, around the parish and going through all Brompton Century up to Stamford Bridge Stadium, which is, of course, the home of Chelsea Football Club. And as I was running there around the stadium, I was looking at these huge posters of the footballers, of the players. And for me, they looked like mighty warriors, modern mighty warriors. And um, God is full of surprise because two years ago now, I met one of these mighty warriors, Olivier Giroud who is a football player, is a French national footballer, is a world champion, and is playing for Chelsea Football Club. Now, Olivier Giroud is also a follower of Jesus, and is part of French Connect and of St. Barnabas, which is an amazing uh, privilege. And Olivier Giroud has a tattoo. He's, he's got many, actually, but he's got a tattoo of the very beginning of our passage this morning, Psalm 23. So let's watch this short video together. And you've got a tattoo? Uh. Yeah, this is a Latin uh, sentence. It means, uh, so Dominus regit me et nil mi derit. It means, uh, God is my shepherd and 
I shall not want, mm. you know, so... And what does that mean to you, for the Lord to uh, be your shepherd? For me, I said, my mum, uh, no, because I was young and it was the south of France and a lot of people um, got tattoos and I just told her, I just want to make a tattoo, but I want uh, the one with, one with um, sense, you know, and mm. I just told her, I really want to to write on myself with a tattoo that I, I believe, I believe mm. in, in God and, and yeah, it was an evidence for me that this Psalm uh, 23 um, um, was um, very synthetic uh, of what uh, uh, God can, can offer us, you know, can always uh, here to protect us and um, looking after everybody, you know. And so he's our shepherd and that's why I wanted to write it on my, um, on my arm. Mm. And you literally carry your faith on your sleeve, don't you? You're... The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not lack nothing. David, who wrote Psalm 23, was a shepherd, he was a poet, he was a singer, a musician, but also a king and a warrior. And I love this comparison between these modern uh, warriors on the beach, uh, of course, and, and these ancient warriors. And I have met regularly Olivier Giroud for Bible studies and prayer. And last year, I remember we've been through the Gospel of John. And we looked especially at the seventh, uh, seven times Jesus is saying, I am in this gospel. And you may remember uh, the famous ones, for example, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Or he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Or he says in John 6, I am the bread of life. Or he says as well, I am the light of the world. He says also in John 15, I'm the true vine. He says also in John 10, I'm the door, the gate. And because I, I knew about this tattoo of Olivier, and his love for Psalm 23, we looked in some death in John 10, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life for the sheep. Friends, it's a breathtaking affirmation of Jesus. Actually, in all Gospel of, of John, when Jesus is using these I am, there are breathtaking affirmation. Because when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, is revealing his identity, is identifying himself with God. David wrote a, a thousand years before Jesus, the Lord Yahweh, God's, Israel's God, is my shepherd. And when Jesus in the Gospel of John is saying, uh, I am the good shepherd, he is claiming that he is God himself. So of course now when we read Psalm 23, as we read Old Testament, we read them through the lens of Jesus, through the lens of the revelation of Jesus. Jesus is our good shepherd. He cares for you. He cares for me. In this passage of John 10, uh, Jesus is saying something important in verse 10, John 10, 10. He says that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I, Jesus says, I have come that you may live, you may have life and life to the full. Friends, we know that this virus is a horrible disaster. It's a vile disease. It's disguising itself. It's invisible. People don't even know they have this disease. It's really contagious as we know. It's a plague. It's pandemic and it's really evil. And we know that God didn't send it. The source of that evil comes from the thief who wants to destroy, to steal and to kill. But God has allowed that virus from some mysterious reasons. And we believe that God can use this virus for his kingdom, for his purposes. You know, David faced so many difficulties and upheavals in his life. In the books of Samuel, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, you, you can read about David's life. But he's been rejected. He's been pursued by his enemy. He's been pursued uh, by his own son. 
son at one point and he had to hide himself in caves he had to live even at one point with within the enemies of israel within the philistines and he had to grieve the loss of his uh, friend jonathan he messed up his life also committing adultery but the lord was his shepherd the lord was comforting him david was a man after god's heart he had faith in god he trusted god with his life he had a deep faith so whatever your situation today the loss maybe of loved ones anxieties about the future unemployment lack of peace lack of sleep the lord jesus wants to be your shepherd last week we just celebrated ascension on thursday and scripture says many times in the new testament that the reason jesus is now the ascended glorious christ he is interceding right now for us in heaven he is not aloof uh, to the, this plague to this virus have you noticed the name we've given to this virus coronavirus in reference of its shape but corona in the latin word com, uh, means uh, crown we speak for example of a coronation for uh, queens a cor coronation ceremony for queens and kings uh, when they are crowned and interestingly within the very name of this vile virus there is a notion of power of authority over our lives because yes this virus has a power a destructive power we have seen it of course in the loss of many lives but also in the economy stopped for example or our lives completely turn around but friends the crowned christians people are looking to are looking at is the crown of thorns that jesus was wearing uh, as he was going heading to the cross the crown of suffering the crown of thorns he wore for us instead of us another memory of god of saint luke is this massive beautiful uh, cross uh, in the chancel of the church and we've got a picture there i find a picture i took myself uh, during my time at saint luke's and when i was at saint luke's i was looking at that cross to remember the sacrifice of jesus and we remember looking at this cross uh, this crown of thorns that he wore is suffering for us and we will remember a bit later that when we share communion so jesus is the true warrior he won for us a great victory of a sin on the cross and death did not hold uh, the uh, did not have the power to hold jesus in the grave in the grave you remember at easter 40 years 40 days ago we celebrated jesus resurrection so the crown of thorns is is not the only crown we can look at at the moment because last thursday as i was saying we celebrated ascension and we can look at another crown jesus has now in heaven jesus is the king of kings he is the lord of lords and he reigns in heaven and his kingdom is expanding he is crowned in majesty these are the two crowns the two coronas we must look at the crown of thorns and the crown of the glorious ascended jesus when we pray the lord's prayer my friend our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven we are praying entering a spiritual battle in prayer we are also mighty warriors praying for jesus's lordship to come on earth as it is in heaven where he is crowned lord of lords kings of kings that's why prayer is so important at the moment and that's why between the ascension and pentecost especially we pray that prayer thy kingdom come so yes coronavirus has some power but our god is all powerful death did not hold jesus death is defeated and this power of resurrection lives in us by his spirit we're not afraid of dying david writes even though i walk through the darkest valley i feel no evil 
for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Friends, death has not the last word. This is our hope. This is our faith. And there's comfort in that. But it's more uh, than just a wishful thinking. It's an experience everyone can access. It's a free gift. Right now, Jesus lives at the right hand of the Father. He lives forever. He intercedes for us. And he poured out his spirit on the very first Pentecost. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Pentecost. And Jesus, continu Jesus continues to pour out his spirit and again and again and again. And he wants to pour out his spirit and his love and his peace and his joy in the midst of our time, in the midst of our suffering today. I love the end of the psalm of David. It says in verse 5 and 6, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus says to his disciple in John 14, just before he went to the cross, that he is ascending to God to prepare us a room in his father's house, a room near green pastures and quiet waters, where we will dwell forever in his presence. In a few minutes, we're going to share the bread and the wine. Um, this is a holy table prepared for us by the Lord in front of our enemies. And John, again in John 14, Jesus is speaking um, of that promise of the Holy Spirit, of the Comforter. And again, here in Psalm 23, we read verse 5. Here it speaks of the Holy Spirit clearly. You announce my head with oil. And we say, come Holy Spirit, we pray. As we prepare for this feast of the Pentecost, let's beg again God to receive more of his Spirit. We need him. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The question this morning is, do you want to receive the Spirit of Jesus? Maybe for the first time. Do you want to receive the Comforter? Do you want to receive more of His Spirit? Do you want to receive and have a comforting faith that draws deep in your soul, that water of life, whatever your circumstances? You know, this Psalm 23 is amazing. Write it in your heart. Tattoo it deep down in your heart. Learn it by heart. Let's pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Fill our hearts with your comforting presence, joy, peace and love. Thank you that we can look at you, Jesus, and your crown, your corona, King of kings, Lord of lords. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I feel no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Let's now turn to the table um, that the Lord has prepared for us, before us, in front of our enemies, and in front of this vile virus, this coronavirus. You may want to uh, bring uh, wine and, and bread at this point. But we will start with a time of confession. Confession is a beautiful word. It's key to freedom. Repentance is a beautiful word. word. You know, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the life of the Spirit 
is has overcome death. So let's turn to God in confidence with deep faith and let's receive his comfort again. So I'm going to read Psalm 51 from the Bible. And David wrote this psalm um, after he had committed adultery. And it's a psalm, a beautiful psalm of confession. I think after he messed up his life. And it says, and let's pray, let's let's think about the, 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 the things we want to bring to the Lord in confession um, this week. It says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my, my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you and me, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Against you, so you are right in your verdict and justify when you judge. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from your, my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart to God and renew the steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those with, with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I'm going just to uh, read a short passage of 1 Corinthians um, 11 to 20, uh, 23. And Paul is speaking about the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what also I have passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and he gave, and when he had given he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we can share the body and the blood of Christ. A prayer after communion, after having, having received these holy gifts from God. Almighty God, we thank you for filling us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit. Feel us again, Lord. Feel us again, we beg you, to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. 
And now the peace, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keeps your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of our God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned and clean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows. He made them His very own. And bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone singing how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me we thank you jesus and we the ransomed in glory his face I at last shall see it will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me singing how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. And how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Is my Savior's love for me? Is my Savior's love for me? Thank you, Lord. As we come to the end of our service, I would love to bring some notices to your attention. As a church, we are taking part in the Thy Kingdom Come initiative, praying for 11 days leading up to the 31st of May, which is Pentecost Sunday. We're nearly halfway through the 11 days. I know some of the kids have been building prayer dens and been ticking off the days of prayer as they go. So great job, kids. St. Luke's is hosting a joint prayer meeting with other local churches via Zoom for part of Thy Kingdom Come. And it's on Wednesday the 27th of May at 12 o'clock midday for an hour, as well as our monthly prayer gathering, which is on Sunday the 31st of May at 11.50 straight after the morning service. We would love for you to join us at either or both of these events. And if you would like to know more, please look at our website and you can email Josh for the details. We would also love to invite you to join a life group which is a great way to go deeper in faith and find support and encouragement. 
The life groups meet via Zoom on Tuesdays and Friday evenings at 7.30. If you'd like to get in touch, we'll give you some more information. Lastly, although at this time the church building is closed, we are still busy with ministry to children and youth and to the vulnerable in our community, as well as supporting our missionaries overseas. So if you'd like to contribute to the work of the church, please use the bank details below. As we close our service, let us pray together. May the grace of God uphold us and the peace of God surround us. And may the love of God flow from us and the strength of God protect and bring us safely through this week. In Jesus' name, Amen.